Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Today we'll be covering two research papers about pediatric brain tumors. The two studies have completely different approaches and show the potential of genomics for diagnosis and treatment. Now, the first paper by Mack et al. look at ependymomas, which are malignant brain tumors in the hindbrain. Um, this is the more primal part of our brains. There are two subtypes, PFA and PFB. PFA occurs in infants and has a really poor prognosis, while PFB occurs in adolescents and adults and have a very good prognosis. So researchers used whole exome sequencing on 42 samples where they matched tumor and with germline and found no changes in the protein coding regions. Interesting whole genome sequencing of three PFA samples and two PFB samples revealed a very low number of somatic mutations or insertion deletions. That is pretty unusual. You know, and so there, there may be an epigenetic basis for this, can for this cancer. You know, that's definitely uh, what they were considering. And to test for an epigenetic component, the researchers performed MBD2 protein precipitation of methylated DNA and hybridized the enriched DNA to the Illumina 450K arrays. They found that the protocol also worked for FFP uh, samples. So MBD CAP stands for methyl binding domain protein capture. Extracted DNA is fractionated and incubated with biotinylated MBD proteins. These tagged proteins bind to methylated DNA forming a complex, which is captured using streptavid encoded magnetic beads. DNA is then eluded with increasing salt concentrations, purified, library prepped, and sequenced. Researchers used this method to identify that the two subtypes, PFA and PFB, have really very distinct methylomes. PFA has had higher methylated CPGs at targets that are silenced in embryonic stem cells by the polycomb repressive complex, PRC2. These targets are really often uh, silenced in cancer. Now what they do is they expand their studies to whole genome bisulfite sequencing to access global methylation, illustrating that methylation is a contributing factor to these cancers. When you treat DNA with bisulfite, it converts cytosine residues to uracil. But that leaves the five methyl cytosine residues unaffected. Polymerases will then replace the uracil with the thymidine. By comparing the treated with untreated sequences, you can determine which residues were methylated. Again, the methylated cytosine residues are the ones that remain unchanged. DNA hypermethylation by whole epigenome sequencing can help identify drugs that target DNA CPG methylation for therapy of untreatable disease. This paper provides a great example of the versatility of next generation sequencing to be able to go from whole exome sequencing to whole genome sequencing to whole epigenome sequencing. But there are times when whole exome sequencing can help distinguish between cancer subtypes. In the paper by Brastinianus et al., they used whole exome sequencing and identified mutations that could distinguish between two cancer subtypes. To select the optimal treatment, the physician needs to know the correct cancer subtype. It's interesting to see how sequencing can be used to distinguish subtypes that otherwise would be very hard to recognize. That's very true. And you know, this is a very complicated subject. So make sure to subscribe to our channel because we're going to cover it in more detail in our upcoming episodes. And remember, you can leave your ideas or questions right below in the comment section. We love to hear from you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.